everyone and welcome back to Talk Time Africa. I'm Nikki. And I'm Jay. Welcome back. It was a fun weekend for us this past couple of days and two of the personalities that we spend the weekend with are here with us in the studio this evening and we wanted to share that experience with you. Jay, what do you have? But also part of that weekend we spent with Apinke magazine. Apinke is an Atlanta-based magazine. Editor-in-chief is Veronica Oladiji and they're celebrating their uh, one year anniversary right. and we, we do congratulate them but going for the magazine I always like to pick up things that I've heard or said or read mm -hmm. during the week and the one thing I picked up was an African proverb that said that what a an old man knows or sees when he's sitting down mm -hmm. a child would not know even if he climbed the highest mountain wow. I think that's wisdom for it you it is wisdom he I would like never that. know it not in a million years not in a million years <laughs> all right so as I was saying uh, earlier that one of the personalities that we spent the weekend with in Atlanta here is the Queen of Nollywood and she is the first Nollywood actor and recording artist from Africa to walk the red carpet at the 53rd Grammys. And when we come back, we'll introduce her to you. Welcome back. So as I was saying, the Queen of Nollywood is here, none other than Omotola Jalade Bekende. Welcome to Talk Time Africa. Thank you. But she's also called almost sexy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shy. <laughs> Where did that come from? Actually, they came from my hobby. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's, that's his pet name for me. Okay. So for those that don't know what almost sexy means? It means like, almost sexy. <laughs> it means sexy lady. Okay. No right. definitions, please. <laughs> you look absolutely wonderful. Thank today. you. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, when they told me I was going to be with you two, I was like, I need to step up my game. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, thank you so much. That's sweet. She's being sweet right now. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> So we had fun uh, all weekend uh, in Atlanta with Omotala. And tell us about your experience so far in Atlanta. Oh, it's been great. great. It's been great. I mean, um, I've never really been here. Yeah. I kind of always, you know, <laughs> I Pass just through. passed through. Yeah. Exactly. You know, okay. so when my manager, uh, when I started working with uh, Bishop mm -hmm. Entertainment and he was from Atlanta, I was like, okay. Good opportunity. Now, right? now I'll have to stay right, <laughs> at some point. Right. So have so, we taken care of you in Atlanta? Yeah, uh, we it's have. been great. <laughs> so I guess <laughs> even if I have to say it myself. Yeah. <laughs> Thank it's you. been extremely wonderful. Everybody here is so warm good. and so friendly, but most importantly, very encouraging. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. So it's safe to say that you will be back. Well, Spend absolutely. more time with us. Absolutely. Yeah. I wouldn't even that. have a choice if I wanted not to. <laughs> okay. You know, but I mean, it's, I, I, I want to. It's like home for me now. Good. That's it's good. like home, yeah. So you're here to do some philanthropic work? Oh, absolutely. Everything, really. I'm here to promote mostly my album. Um, just came out last, um, the last quarter of last year. Mm -hmm. You know, 2010. Mm -hmm. Me, Myself and Eyes. Right. It's yeah. actually titled Omotola, right? No, Me, Myself, me, myself and, and Eyes. eyes. Yeah. Oh, wow. All of almost sexy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, um, yesterday night was actually um, my birthday, oh. you know, celebration, and also an introduction of the album mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. to that Atlanta crowd. Mm -hmm. And I was I was saying earlier that I was uh, at that event. And she rocked the house. When I tell you she rocked the house, she really did. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was nice. It was. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how long have you been working on that project? Um, two years, actually. Okay. Two years. Wow. Um, so, yeah. I've been working on it, actually, since 2008, mm -hmm. February. Does it have a theme? What kind of music is it? It's pop. Okay. It's mostly pop. Um, with um, a lot of on the tone rock okay yeah behind it mm -hmm. I actually probably will end up in, in, in the rock genre in the rock world yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know because I'm from Africa you mm -hmm. know it's, it, it would be like shock therapy if I just went straight into rock I know so yeah I'm taking it easy okay and, you know, starting introducing off. it mm -hmm. gently and trying to find myself to okay. my voice okay. in, in, in music so kind of like evolving yeah. through the music yeah okay. exactly Sounds till I get to where I'm, I'm right, right, right. <laughs> I know we're talking about music a lot of people watching the show would recognize you from acting mm -hmm. yeah. and so you are an actor yes um but you do sing so we do want people to know out there that your first passion is it safe to say your first passion 
Is singing or does it come hand in hand? Passion. <laughs> I have a problem with that word. That word? <laughs> Passion. I'll say my first um, career. Your first career. Mm -hmm. My first endeavor. Is exactly because both of them are my passions. Okay. At least my first passion actually was music. Okay. And that's the truth. I just didn't start it okay. before acting. acting. Okay. So. so it's okay for you to you do recognize her from the a movies. lot of her movies, yeah. but she actually is a singer. Yeah. So that's good to know. <laughs> that's good to know. That comes in handy when you have two different careers. Yeah. It comes in handy as far as the money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I wanted to say yes, but I got to know what you were, what you were going to say next. Awesome, awesome. Mm. So, um, I know we put the music first, we put the acting first. I wanted to talk about your family, where you grew up, and your family life. Um, I grew up in Lagos. I was born in Lagos, and I grew up with um, my, my dad, mm -hmm. my mom, uh, quite a small family. If you want to talk, talk about in text of, you know, the African right, right, um, right. kind of, you know, family, uh, tree or anything so I, I have two younger brothers okay so we're just three kids mm, yeah yeah that is small as far as I <laughs> yes and I know they passed away kind of early in your life how was that yeah. experience for you must have been traumatic yeah it was very traumatic mm. I mean I was absolutely close to my dad you know so when I was uh, told I would have to go to Lagos mm -hmm. I mean you can imagine everybody myself and the students knew something was wrong because it was almost time for our exams, right, right. my GSS exams, and there was no way you would be called to, you know, leave that if it wasn't something serious. Yeah. So, you know, to cut the whole story short, I got to Lagos and, of course, that was the gloomy house and everybody was crying mm -hmm. and I got to know my dad was dead. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that kind of changed the dynamics of, my, of everything, you right. know, my life and how everything was going mm -hmm. because, um, automatically, my mom... Uh, became like my dad right. and I had to become like the mom in the house because mm. I was I was older than my younger ones mm -hmm. you know with some a few years mm -hmm. you know my immediate younger brother uh, I'm, I'm older than him with about six to seven years oh, okay. comfortably yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so you know I became like their mom mm -hmm. and everything so my priorities changed yeah. responsibilities and everything yeah, yeah. So that, overnight kind yeah. Of, mm. so that has been a very defining um, you know should I say circumstance in my mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah Sometimes when something like that happens, it gets you ready for a whole new beginning. Yeah. I know, for so many other things that would happen in the future. Exactly. Right. So would you say that prepared you for where you are today? Oh, absolutely. I mean, like I said, that was that was what changed everything. Because, I mean, I couldn't do so many other things that my people my age were doing. Not because my mom was stopping me from doing them, but because I just didn't even have the time. Yeah. I had two kids to take care of, right. you know, practically, you know. So, yeah. And... It would, I would say it, it probably was the reason why I could, is I could get married early in life because I was already very mature anyway. Yeah. I mean, at age 14, 15, you would think I was, what, 19, 20. Wow. You, you grew know. up quickly. Is it also safe to say that it got you ready for your philanthropic work with children? Because we read about you and your work with orphanages. Right. That, is that part of what prepared you for it? Yeah, I would say, yeah. I, I, I started to have... The, those feelings from that age because there were times because I came from a family where we were really comfortable when my father was alive we were really doing well mm -hmm. you know living above average mm -hmm. and then you know how it is in Africa when, when he died so many things went wrong yeah. and we practically went to a point where we had almost nothing mm -hmm. except the house we're living in mm -hmm. you know so I, I knew what it, it felt like to not know where your next meal was going to come from and yet you have two little ones to, to really uh, take care of you know they had to go to school they had to eat and all of that stuff so I, I knew what it felt like not to have mm. and just the pain and the feeling that you know your life should not be like this you know so yeah I felt that I understand that I mean there were times when my mom and I would cry hours on end you know just you know thinking what next you know really what next you know so yeah I, I can identify with children who are either orphans because I'm an orphan myself right. you know or people who just don't have anything you know, not because, you know, they, they choose, yeah, to, they not choose not to have or just they don't want to work. Life happens. Or anything, but just li life, yeah. yeah, life has doled that down on them. You talked about getting married earlier. And I remember reading somewhere that you got married on an airplane. Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> well, when we wanted to get married, uh, we're thinking, you know, just juggling ideas. Mm -hmm. And 
my very crazy husband <laughs> when why do we really have to get married in a cathedral like everybody else i was like no we don't <laughs> i thought he was gonna say we could get married on the beach you know or something like everybody else something does romantic. and he was like you know what i have a very wonderful idea and so he went and i think he went and asked because nobody has done it ever at least not in africa so he wanted to even go find out if it was possible before he would you know break the news to me so he went and asked his bosses if it was possible and they told him no but I mean, it's not a, like, you know, something, you know, they couldn't think about, but they just don't think, you know, um, the government or anybody would give them, the, you know, the pass to do it. So he came back and they told me, he said, oh, you know, I wish we could have been able to do this, but I'm waiting on these guys to get back to me. They think, you know, it would be too much of a problem getting, you know, the pass and everything to do it. I was like, wow, that's great and everything. But you know we can push for it <laughs> and that was exactly what we did and you know luckily they just go back and say this is crazy but you know let's do it and that was what happened and we, we worked out the insurance and everything for everybody who was going to come on board and vow we we're getting married in the air so was that plane actually flying it was it was yeah so how was that experience <laughs> like i said it was really crazy because because <laughs> when we we had the you know the bishop come on air he was like I know I want to be close to God, <laughs> but not literally. <laughs> you know, what are you guys doing? And he thought, you know, that we were actually joking. He thought we we're going to park in the place, do it, and then maybe fly somewhere, maybe for the reception and come back. So we told him, no, we're actually going to be doing the whole proceeding and everything, you know, on board, you know, in the air. He was like, are you people really serious? <laughs> Nobody told me that, <laughs> that part, you know. But that was it, you know. And that, that, that was a really quick thought, Bobby. <laughs>